to the place where visiting teams and their dreams of winning often go to die. UD Arena, the scene today for an Atlantic 10 showdown between St. Joseph's and Dayton. As we visit the conference standings, the map is simple. A flyer win and Dayton repeats as regular season champion. Good afternoon, great to be here. I'm Jim Barber, this is Rob Gold on Woody, the former Stanford All-American. Dayton has won 24 in a row in this building. That's the third longest home winning streak in the country. And besides protecting home court and trying to win the regular season championship, what other things are at stake for, for both teams? Well, certainly in the Atlantic 10, it's starting to look like a two-bid conference of the NCAA tournament, but it's not necessarily clear, and neither coach wants to take a chance. So each game matters. And for the Atlantic 10 tournament itself, you want to fight for the best seeding you can get because if you're in the top four, you get that first round by. Well said. Let's go one-on-one. -on -one. Let's talk about two guards that really excel in that backcourt. Well, 
for St. Joseph, Natasha Cloud is excellent individually in the fast break. She's very good at creating for herself and for others. She dribbles with her head up and drives under control. Her height at six foot gives her good vision, and that's why she's number two in the nation for assists. Now on the other end, it's the Dayton Flyers, Andrea Hoover. She benefits from this system of run and gun offense because she goes hard, she runs her lane, and she beats the defense down the court. She's really good at creating layups, uh, creating layups and finishing, and she's got the green light for pull-up jump shots and threes. And let's talk head coaches. Cindy Griffin, born and raised in the Philadelphia area, 13th season as St. Joe head coach and a record of 243 and 162. Starts Cloud, Shields, and Andrews in the backcourt, and Aaron Shields averages 16 points a game. Up front, Fairbanks and Ashley Robinson. For Dayton in 19 and 5, it's Hoover and Dean and Edwards in the backcourt. Dean back from a concussion in this rematch. Ali Malat and the only senior of the 10 starters today, Cassie Sam. The coach of Dayton, the ever personable Jim Jaber in his 11th season. Ought to be a lot of fun today. Matinee basketball from ESPN U. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun, and especially two teams that have great offensive players in Dayton number five off scoring offense in the nation. They're going to try and play fast and put baskets up. Yes, they love to get a rebound and they love to go. In fact, their head coach models that offense off a couple of professional NBA coaches of the past. We'll talk about that as we progress during the broadcast. Dayton opens up in a player to player defense. Look for Aaron Shields to get a touch. She's number three. She was the First to be working today out here on the floor. What Coach Jaber of Dayton wants to do with Erin Shields is make her put it on the floor because she loves to look for her three-point shot. St. Joe late into the shot clock, beat the clock, missed the shot, the rebound taken down by Malott and a foul. And you saw moments ago what's at stake. That could be a sweep today for St. Joe and considering how competitive these two teams are, that would say a lot. Well, St. Joe's did an excellent job against Dayton. Last time they played, they held them to 33% field goal percentage and only 11 assists. Dayton's success is a lot about sharing the ball. Offensive foul, no sharing there on the charge. It's on Amber Dean. And the charge is important. Coach Griffin for St. Joseph said so much of this game is going to be about one transition, transition defense, but two, positioning, keeping their guards in front and boxing out against their big players who are much bigger than us. Talk to St. Joe about how they defend a team that scores in transition. They don't necessarily bring more people back off of missed shots. You say we've got to play the way we are, but we also have to be smart about how we do it. Absolutely. Coach Griffin said we can run in spurts with Dayton, but I don't think we're going to win if we score 85 points or we allow them to score 85 points or more. We've got to pick our, pick our moments. Inside out and a three ball on the way and a good block out. And the rebound taken down by 21, Sierra Andrews. Shields off glass, missed it. And another rebound to Malott. Ninety seconds in, and so far a scoreless duel. Now Dayton, what they prefer to do, Coach Daver told me, he says, we're trying to score in six seconds or less in, in, in the fast break, and if that doesn't happen, then we'll make our offense work in the half court set. Paul Westhead coached in the NBA and a Loyola Marymount. Many years back had that offense that could shoot the ball in six seconds or less. And sure, the guru of go now at Oregon basketball. And he patterns some of that basketball after him. And also Mike D'Antonio with the Phoenix Suns. On the break, Amber Dean. And there it is. Some of the most success for running and gunning has to do with the defensive board. You get that rebound, you kick it out. The outlet pass is next. That rebound, that outlet pass went all the way to half court, covered the court fast. Inside move and a nice one by Sarah Fairbanks, who's just a sophomore out of Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. She's got a few fans here today as well. Fairbanks, just a reserve last year, moved into a much bigger role and has responded only a sophomore. In fact, Dayton coach Jim Jaber says that's what's so good about Cindy Griffin. She can take new players and develop them along very nicely and suddenly they are factors. That's Celeste Edwards who puts her team back up by two.
15 on the shot clock and three minutes into the game. Shields gets bumped about 30 feet from the goal by Malott. Shields does the right thing here. She sees the bigger defender coming out, trying to trap, trying to bump her off her course. Shields attacks the hip of the bigger defender, who's too close. Malott's too close, too slow. She gets the foul. Malott had 17 points, 15 rebounds, and the team's win on Wednesday. Also five turnovers. A low-scoring start and a great pass inside layup, Fairbanks. Fairbanks. Give that assist to 13, Ashley Robinson. That's Hoover on the drive with the right hand. And you're going to see a lot of dribble penetration from Dayton in the half-court set. They're going to use screens. They're going to make a lot of reads. But most of their success in the half-court set starts off the dribble. It is a 4-4 game. I'm assuming a low-scoring game favors St. Joseph's. Celeste Edwards is chasing Erin Shields all around the court. Shields adjusts there and goes back door, sees her over-aggressive on her, able to make the play behind and when the defense is coming out too hard. And Shields has added a lot to her game. She can put the ball on the floor. She's got a mid-range game. She's Got the entire package, as they say. She was last year's uh, A-10 most improved player. Coach Griffin said she might have be that again. Yeah. The senior, Cassie Sant, a little short, but a great follow by Hoover, and that's short. That's Hoover's game. Aggressive play, go hard, offensive board, chase it down. Against the double team, nearly a steal, and instead a foul. Uh, number five, no, it's going to be... A foul on Shields, so Aaron Shields picks up the offensive foul. And Celeste Edward gets a high five from her coach. ESP News exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Progressive, making it easy to bundle your home and car insurance. At any time today, if there's something you want me to queue you up on or if I've got something. ESPNU is the place for men's college hoops tonight, starting at 6. Another edition of ACC Sunday Night Basketball, Florida State takes on Pitt, and then at 8 to the Pac-12. Arizona State against Utah. Both games also live on Watch ESPN. Arizona State coming off that huge win over Arizona a week ago. And Pitt forward Lamar Patterson having a wonderful year in the top 10 in a number of ACC categories. Pitt lost that heartbreaker to Syracuse in the last couple of weeks, and then Syracuse got payback, losing to Boston College, and then last night to Duke. And that's just a tough turnaround for them, you know. You get the unforeseen upset against Boston College, and then you have to turn around and play Duke. You go from undefeated to two losses back to back. I think unforeseen is a good word. <laughs> I don't think anybody <laughs> saw that coming. I don't know. Did you see the reaction from, from Beheim? Uh, he wasn't a happy guy last night down the stretch with one of the uh, 
calls that went against him. But Syracuse is going to be pretty good, as you know, in the tournament. Absolutely. Here we have a 6-4 game in favor of the Hawks of St. Joe. Amber Dean has the ball swatted away in a good defensive play by Natasha Cloud, who knocked it off of Dean and gives St. Joe the basketball. St. Joe's has done a good job against Amber Dean, keeping her in front, forcing a turnover there. Other time, forced a charge. Dean has to make better decisions in traffic. Dean turned 20 years old yesterday, and the team serenaded her with happy birthday. Now off the Hawks turnover, and here come the Flyers. Adriana Sitkovich calling for the ball inside. Dean airballs that, but a good catch by Hoover. And you're right, that's her game. Kind of hovers around that rim. Now drives with the left hand and scores. And she made that happen with the second effort. Gold on Woody, who starred at Stanford. I'm Jim Barber. This is college basketball women's style today on the U. St. Joe again late into the shot clock with five. Beat the clock and get the corner jumper. A three, three by Kelsey, Kelsey Berger. Berger. It's the quick extra pass from the top, Natasha Cloud, though. Passing up perhaps a contested shot and soon get to the open player. Kelsey's parents here today, Kevin and Camille. And another offensive foul call. Norma Jones, the outside official, making the call. And this is something Shields has worked on. It's her ability to continue putting the ball on the floor that keeps a play that's kind of messing up alive. And then the extra passes come out of it. But last season, Shields was, was more of a spot-up shooter. She's worked all summer long, all offseason, on off-the-dribble moves, putting the ball on the floor. And right there didn't result in her shot, but helped set something up for her teammates. Yeah, in fact, she averages three and a half assists a game. You saw a pretty one there. Good give and go. A little mid-range shot, but missed by Gottfrieda. And Cloud at six foot. She has such good vision coming off of any ball screen. She's a very good creator for others. But I think it's her ability to create for herself first that draws the attention of the defense, and then she's able to give it up. Jim Jaber, the head coach of Dayton, says that's the key player to stop today. Cloud, who had 21, 8, and 8. Well, she's the catalyst. The win. Yep. Coach Jaber wants to try and trap her, get the ball out of her hands. Tiffany Johnson, Tiffany Johnson has played some point this year. She is now coming off the bench, replacing Celeste Edwards. With Amber Dean out, she actually missed the, the game against St. Joseph's, where St. Joseph's got the win. Well, on senior day, you're supposed to score every time you get the ball right. That's Cassie Sant, the oh. only senior of either team in the starting lineups. Good for her. She's got 80 to, to 100 people in the stands right now. After the game, there's going to be a huge celebration. Cake, pizza, all of that. And we're going to embarrass her later with some baby pictures that uh, <laughs> are a must-see. Got Frida. They're back to the basket, scoring the hoop. Back, we talked to Mom earlier today and told her about that. And uh, Rosalind and uh, husband Eric are in the crowd today as well for a very special day. Well, Cassie Sant, she said she's going to ball. She's going to cry <laughs> during the senior ceremony. And that's why Coach Jaber has decided to do it after the game. It, it lets the emotions happen after the game, and you're not just worn out during the game. You didn't do that Stanford, did you? They did. Stanford did do that. And did you cry? An absolute mess. You know, you realize whether you go pro or not, there's something very special about college basketball. Everyone chose to be there. You're playing for a team. And, you know, it may be your last days on a team or you go on to a pro level. There's nothing like the camaraderie of, of college ball. And the entire town of Kettering, Ohio, is here today, <laughs> which will, as you mentioned, be invited to the post-game ceremony on top of UD Arena at the conclusion of the game. 12-minute mark, 11-8, our score in favor of St. Joe. Aaron passed by Berger, Tiffany Johnson open court. And Hoover took a step, and we will take a break. For Dayton, it's the Atlantic 10 regular season championship at stake. We're coming back in a moment.
We're back. Low scoring start. St. Joe and Dayton. The Hawks leading this game by a score of 11 to 8. Well, we mentioned senior day at Stanford <laughs> many years ago. It's senior day or afternoon today for Cassie Sant. And let's take a trip down memory lane and show you what Cassie looked like as a little one. She is a darling baby girl. Big old eyes. Actually, you know, she's grown into a woman, a young woman with a quiet personality, but over the course of her career has really started to come out of her shell. <laughs> And you know, you look at this young lady here, big eyes, beautiful blonde hair, and you see how they develop over the course of a lifetime and then over the course of a college career. Now she's vocal on the court. Yes. She's come out of her shell. She's a leader. She's a quarterback. She's telling people where to be. You know, and that's something that, that Coach Jaber is very proud of, just her maturity as a young woman and as a leader for the team. She says Jaber's had a lot to do with that and encouraging her to be more aggressive, to be more assertive. And as a result, she is celebrating a good senior season. And who knows where some of these young ladies will be in a few years, maybe playing for Coach Jaber, who's in his 11th year. Cassie Santa also said that uh, when I asked her, well, what are you going to what are you going to miss about Coach? And she said, well, the, the fact is that, you know, he's so much of a part of your life, not only on the floor, but also away from it. That's awesome. You know, when the relationship goes beyond your four years, it lasts for 40, it goes beyond. Aaron Shields out of the game right now. For St. Joseph's, you lose, even if she isn't hitting her threes just yet, you lose someone that defense has to be glued to, and it makes it easier for others to score. Shields has one field goal in this game. The Celeste Edwards has been harassing her defensively. And at 5'9", she's much bigger than Shields, making it tough for her. And so far for Dayton, just 4-14 from the floor, but they're doing a pretty good job on the boards with a 10-6 advantage, and that leads again to some second chance points this time by Edwards. Jaber says Edwards is gonna be really good. She just focuses in, you know, offensively, she's long, lakey, can create her own shot when she's being aggressive. And she's cocky in a good way, he yeah. says. In fact, when they were touring overseas and visited Italy, she was the uh, fashion guru. She had the uh, nicely attired handbag and purse and everything, and. As we take a look at her on the court, she's smooth. These are long dribbles, big steps, quick first step past, past the defense. With one step, she left the defense way behind her. That's length and athleticism. Shot clock at seven. And on the bank, Andrews misses. A chance for Dayton to go ahead. Coach Griffin likes that shot from Andrews, though. And she says Andrews is best when she's attacking and being aggressive. That pass intended for Sant. And she picks up the personal foul with the block out. And credit Andrews. You know, the young player comes down, misses the layup, but hustles back and transition, transition defense nearly forces a steal, but even still gets the turnover by being back on defense. What coach wouldn't like that, right? Mm -hmm. Reverse layup and scored nicely by Kelsey Berger, who spent two years playing for the Air Force Academy. There is a lot more opportunity on this St. Joseph's team that lost four seniors to graduation. They had been to the postseason every year of their career. This is a major senior class. Take a look at St. Joe on offense moments ago and the great move by Berger to score the ball. It starts with sharing the ball, but Berger goes baseline, leaves the defense on her back where she's able to create on the other side of the rim, avoiding any block. High pick set by Sant. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Under 10 minutes for the first half. St. Joe, St. Dayton looks a little bit less purposeful in the half court set here. A lot of time coming off the clock. And a strip by Sierra Andrews. Andrews going one on one with Dean. Missing on the bank. And look at Edwards run the open court. On the pull up, scores! Coach Daber in this fast break, unlike last season, it wasn't get it to the point guard like last season. He says now anyone can get the ball and go. And he says in the fast break, it's making us more, more efficient, quicker, and giving us more options. 
as if this team over years hasn't been tough enough to stop. Bank shot there by Kelsey Berger, and she's been Kelsey very Berger. active on offense for St. Joe so far. Berger showing versatility, finishing inside, now from the wing using ball handling to get to the cup. This afternoon, it's 20-6 and six St. Joe and 19-5 and five Dayton. Two teams expected to make the NCAA tournament, and the only two likely out of the Atlantic 10. And the game for the Hawks, number three. And that's why there's so much unspoken pressure on conferences like the Atlantic 10, where you're not sure if there's going to be multiple members, teams coming out for the NCAA tournament. So much pressure on the tournament itself. You know, and neither coach was really sure if, if there was, was going to be a two-bid league, and neither coach wants to leave it up to other decision makers. That's why they're saying every game counts right now for seeding and for our postseason resume. Yeah, one of the problems for mid-majors, and Jim Jaber has talked about this, is the fact that a lot of the really good high majors won't come into this building to play. Now, Michigan State did make an appearance, and Purdue will be there next season, but getting people to come here, uh, it's not easy. Sure. You know, teams want to have, you know, some good wins in the preseason, but you come into a mid-major like Dayton, you know, what's so mid-major about them, really? This yeah, is a team true. that last season was ranked as high as 11. You know, made it to the second round of the tournament. You've got, in Coach Jaber, a finalist for the Nate Smith Coach of the Year with the likes of Kim Mulkey, uh, Lindsey Gottlieb, uh, Muffet McGraw, you know, one of the top coaches in the mastermind behind this offense. Yeah, solid point. Mid-major really is misleading. You know, at Gonzaga, Coach Graves does not like the term mid-major. He says, we fly our own jet to games. <laughs> what is so mid-major about that? Yeah, absolutely nothing. Look at Edwards in the open court. And an offensive foul called on Celeste Edwards. Let's show you Edwards, though, moments ago in transition. And this is why Jim Jaber is very high on number five, the freshman. Celeste Edwards able to get to the basket if she wants to, but here, young player making good decisions, pulls up before getting in too deep. St. Joseph's up 15-12. One of the better pep bands in college basketball, the University of Dayton. That's our scene today, St. Joe and Dayton. And a few programs look to build their resumes during Bracket Builder Week on ESPNU next Sunday. At 1230, Virginia takes on Florida State. And then at 2.30, number four, South Carolina takes on number 10, Tennessee. Both games also live on Watch ESPN. Let's talk about Megan Simmons and the, how much you like her and what her play can bring. You know, I root for Megan Simmons. Over the course of her career, it's been the critique that she could get out of control. She doesn't take good shot selection. But look at her now, field goal percentage, 52%. She's done such a better job in her senior year. It's starting to come together on shot selection, putting down the basket, being a team player within the, within the offense. And I just like watching her. She's very athletic for a little guard. She can get up in the air, create her own shot, crafty handle. She's fun to watch. And Tennessee without Pat Summit, life going on. 
do. Holly Warren doing an excellent job, and you would think so. She was there all those years as the associate head coach under Pat Summit, a great basketball mind herself. Ordinarily, I'd say a tough act to follow, but let's say an impossible act to follow with all those championships Absolutely. and the great legacy that Pat has left. Under eight minutes, first half, and the jumper from the outside by Berger, Berger, who has nine off the bench today and has not missed a field goal. Who is Kelsey Berger today? Coming off, squared up, finding gaps, not getting into deep. Plenty at stake today for Dayton. A win gives the Flyers the regular season championship for the second year in a row, and also the number one seed and a bye in the A-10 tournament. Edwards to Hoover, good look. Dayton knows 6 of 20 from the floor. Shields. And the layup good. Nobody able to pick up in the Sierra transition Andrews. game. Sierra Edwards. Or Andrews, excuse me, and it's now 19-12. St. Joe's initiated pretty good offense today. And it starts, too, with movement without the ball. Aaron Shields does a great job putting the ball on the floor, but without Andrew spotting up on the three-point line, giving her someone to pass to, she's driving into traffic. So it takes two to tango. Beautiful, fast break run by two players. And so far, Roz St. Joe with eight field goals and six are assisted. Hoover at the line, one thing that Coach Daver says about her, he loves her toughness. He says, I wish that we could keep stats on how many charges she takes. She sets the tone for them, not only on offense, and talk a lot about her offense, but defensively as well. And this year, she's attempted 105 free throws and knocked down 99 of them with those two makes moments ago. In fact, we speak of free throw shooters, and these are two of the best in the world. Yeah. Tops in the nation, very good, very efficient. The concentration you need, the focus to be great at the free throw line every single time. But it's Hoover who attacks the rim more. She's been to the free throw line 103 times versus Shields just 78. Hawks are 80% for the line, and their head coach, Cindy Griffin, says, well, we, we emphasize it. And on top of that, we have little rewards for people when they do well in practice with it. And check out Jody Corneli Sigmundova. You know, this is Jaber's project, he says. And she's been a project, but at 6'5", you like a 6'5 project. Yep. <laughs> Play for the French national team. Drop down low, shot up and in by Ilsa Gottfrieda. She's really improved her game. St. Joseph's lost their top rebounder, a top scorer, and Shatila Van Grim Grimsman. And that opened up a lot of opportunity in the post for some young players. Hawks playing on a five-point lead. And Sigmund Devo, good position there to block out, get the rebound, and lead to Hoover. And foul call, and Malott will go to the free throw line. Well, you mentioned the transition game as St. Joe now has picked up its 15 foul. But the transition game starts with the defensive board. Sigmundova gets it, gets the ball, but look how far out the outlet pass is. Uh, Celeste Edwards is nearly at half court. One dribble, two, kicks it up, and then it doesn't end there. You have to have people trailing and following the break, and that's how Malat was able to get down there and get that, that offensive rebound. Everyone executes in the fast break. And Coach Jaber talked about using D'Antoni's uh, fast break offense when he was with the, with the Phoenix Suns. Uh, I think Steve Nash and all those guys. And pretty much he wants to charge it down your throat, penetrate for the drive, or set some staggered screens behind and, and score in six seconds or less if you can. Puts a lot of pressure on the defense, doesn't it? Absolutely. you got to get back. Flyers trailing by three with the ball, and this is Andrea Hoover. Hoover on the drive with the left hand, and she is fouled, and down the floor she goes, and in a lot of pain. Hoover's been on the floor a lot this game, and she really sacrifices her body. She's grabbing her elbow as she gets up here. 
She's driving in traffic and gets tripped up on the leg of Andrews and goes down on her elbow. Christian Tritt is the trainer. The head coach, Jim Jaber, came out. And guess what? Hoover's not leaving. <laughs> no surprise. Coach Jaber says about Hoover, she is tough as they come. She's the type of kid that goes hard every single drill. She's the type of kid that you can yell at. Not everybody has the thick skin for that. Hoover is just that. He enjoys coaching this player. Hoover had walked to the sidelines. And she will leave for the moment, but now Hoover is back at the scorer's table. Tiffany Johnson will shoot the free throws. Johnson, only been to the free throw line 20 times this season, shooting 50%, takes half of them. You know, she's, she did a very nice job against St. Joseph's when they first played earlier. Amber Dean was out with a concussion. She got her first start and had a career high 14 points for the team. She stepped up when the team needed her. Put her team in position to win, but they were outscored significantly in the second half and suffered their only regular season loss in the conference. Game is tightened up until that two Ilsa makes it 23 to 20 as Ilsa Gottfrieda knocks it down. Flyers worked out this morning for about an hour and 10 minutes. St. Joe passed on the morning workout and actually prepared yesterday for a little more than two hours. And that's not necessarily what Johnson is about. Coach, Coach Davis says Johnson isn't quite as athletic as like a Celeste Edwards or Amber Dean. She's not always looking for her offense first. Right there, just forced the action just a bit. Johnson's a Philadelphia kid. Transferred from Drexel University to University of Dayton. And if you're just joining us, the Flyers in the home white with the red numbers are with the basketball. Sigmundova with a shot and knocks it down. St. Joseph's knows that Dayton in the half court set wants to use on ball screens. They're hedging out, making it hard for Hoover to come off strong, but Hoover is making great reads and good decisions, and that time hits the open Cornelia Sigmundova for the shot. Sometimes it's misleading when people think that transition teams who score a lot of points on breaks can't play in the half court. Dayton can. But this is where they excel in transition, Hoover. If you had to pick your poison, you'd like to slow them down. But a lot of times you can't. <laughs> Under four minute timeout awaits. From beyond the free throw line, ribbing no. Foul called on St. Joe. Dayton, what's trailing by seven, has gone ahead, and this is one of the reasons right here. Malott puts him up by one.
Dayton with 24 consecutive wins at home with the modest lead of one at 24-23. ESPNU is the place for college hoops tonight, and it starts at 6 o'clock. Another edition of ACC Sunday Night Basketball as Florida State takes on Pittsburgh. And then at 8, it's Arizona State taking on Utah. Both games also live on Watch ESPN. The Utes have a win over UCLA earlier this season in Pac-12 competition. It's an enthusiastic bunch. Dayton has the third longest home win streak that's active behind Chattanooga at 37 and East Carolina at 26. Yeah, talking to streaks for Dayton, they had a bunch of them. Their loss to St. Joseph's earlier this season snapped a 26 game, a 23 game regular season Atlantic 10 conference streak. They had been truly dominant. They're on a seven game win streak now, though. 17 of the last 18. Yeah, that's uh, that's awfully impressive. But St. Th Joseph's is hot as well. They won three straight. And these two teams met last year on March 7th. Regular season championship clinched here by Dayton. Turned right around, went to the tournament. And it, the tournament favor was returned by St. Joe in the semifinals, which led St. Joe to the championship against Fordham and the A-10 title. And, you know, for St. Joseph's, one of the benefits, too, was in, that se in the semifinal game where they upset Dayton, it's happening on their home court. Yes. You know, so the Atlantic 10 tournament the past couple of years, first three rounds were happening at St. Joseph's. Now the Atlantic 10 has signed a new contract in Richmond, Virginia, uh, which is good for Richmond and VCU, of course, but uh, it takes away the home court advantage for these top two teams in the league. I think it's a good idea, and in fact, the entire city of Richmond is, as the cliche goes, lays out the red carpet for this one. They're pretty excited. It's going to be a one and one when play resumes. And after verification of the shooter, Andrea Hoover. Play continues, and what better shooter for Jim Jaber to have at the free throw line? You know, the tournament, uh, the Atlantic Tekken tournament, this is only the third time in the 32-year history of the conference that they're having it on a neutral site. Really? You know, and there's pros and cons to that, especially in women's basketball. You hold it at a, at a site of a, of a team, often you can really bring in fans if they go far. But Virginia, a hot breeding gap, uh, ground for women's basketball, should do very well at the Richmond Coliseum. Yeah, in fact, when they had the original media conference about it, the announcement, it was uh, met with a lot of electricity. And somehow, some way, to the baseline goes Natasha Cloud, who was so good against Dayton in the regular season. Before that layup, Cloud was 0 for 3 in the game. She needs to be more aggressive. Get to the basket. And Coach Griffin perhaps find some ways to get her easy looks. She is the one person that Dayton would like to shut down. Cornelli Sigmundova with a three, and Sigmundova got that good-looking outside shot. And for her today, she now has six. <laughs> Coach Javer said there are moments where she shows flashes and brilliance. Great promise. That was one of them as Fairbanks on the drive will step to the free throw line. And this is the first St. Joe trip to the line. Well, Corneli Sigmundova is also a great shot blocker, especially at 6'5". But when you are a great shot blocker, you often get thirsty for the block. Sure. And you've got to make good decisions of, you know, when to go up for the block and when to play better defense. Don't let the player get in front of you and get past you. Beat them to the spot, and that will help you better as opposed to putting yourself in foul trouble. Now, as a team, the Hawks are shooting 80% for the line, so how important is it for them to get to the line often? Majorly. You want to attack the rim, then. And today, they've attempted just two. One point game deep into the first half. Sigmundova off the bounce, and she is fouled. And this time, Fairbanks bails Corneli Sigmundova out. You don't have to come out contesting so far. Corneli Sigmundova off the dribble, pull up. All you got to do is get a hand up. Sigmundova only averages just under four points per game. And she has a ritual before the game, it's part of the superstition, that uh, when Andrea Hoover steps on the court, she lets up this long yell, Hoover, <laughs> and the team cracks up and gets everybody in the spirit of the game. 
three-point separation, down to two minutes. And Sigmundovo the rebound and finds a guard. Hoover has struggled from the floor, has been in the line a lot, and she's also picking up assists like that one to the senior Cassie Sand. Timeout St. Joe. And this is the execution that Dayton wants out of their pick and roll. St. Joseph's is choosing to hedge out. That means two defenders are giving attention to Andrea Hoover, whose drip gives one backwards dribble to get enough space to lob that pass over the hands of the two defenders. What has to happen if you're giving two defenders up like that, you've got to have help side defense in place and ready to help on Sant diving and slipping to the basket. And pretty good decision making, wouldn't you say, by Hoover, because she's one for eight from the floor, so she hasn't got her jumper going. So why not do other things like pick up your third assist? That's what good players do. They have other ways to affect the game. Well, you like that at Stanford if you're struggling and scoring? I was a role player at Stanford. So uh, the way I was on the court was doing the other things. Play defense, pass to our great players, get us into an offense. So at the beginning of the broadcast, when I met you as All-American, I... Uh, I blushed. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. I hope Tara Vanderveer's not watching. <laughs> I, I do that a lot to people I work with. I just try to bump them up a lot. <laughs> Dayton has scored on six straight possessions, and that's why the Flyers have a five-point lead. Dayton still on a player-to-player. -player. Celeste Edwards still harassing Aaron Shields. Shields has only attempted one three in this game. And Shields has been limited to two points in the first half. She averages over 15. The well, last game against St. Joseph, I mean, against Dayton, Shields was held to 15 points on three for 12 shooting. Really struggled from the field. And Coach Griffin said some of the ways she's going to try and get Shields open today in transition, beat the defense, and maybe pop her off some screens. But she knows that the size of Edwards is going to disrupt Shields. Hasn't been able to get open much so far. Her team now in its largest deficit of seven. Under 10 to shoot. Here's Cloud trying to create. Shields a long three. Dayton can't play for the last shot, but it's about just a five second differential. You gotta credit Celeste Edwards, just a freshman has a tough assignment on defense and has been running the point guard all game. And that's very tiring. And just a freshman. Coming up at the half on our Sports Center U Halftime Report, the studio recap yesterday's action from UConn women to the top men's games in our first half stats and highlights. And Syracuse Duke will be at the top of those games as Wichita State, meanwhile, continues to stay undefeated. Yeah, out of that Missouri Valley Conference, Yesterday, just clinched regular season champs. You know, some people are saying, who are they playing? But you try go under, going undefeated against anyone over the course of the season. That is tremendous concentration, execution. And you know when people say that, I, for some reason they forgot that Wichita State was in the Final Four last year and nearly beat Louisville, the eventual champion. Oh, they've been good for a while. Oh, yeah. There's Marshall, the head coach there, and getting a lot of signature wins. Ten seconds to go, first half. Here's Cloud. Double in the corner and in trouble. And a five-second violation. Or did she get a timeout? She got a timeout with 4.9 left. Dayton is not allowing St. Joseph's any penetration inside the three-point line. And Cloud made the biggest mistake of all, picking up the ball in the corner. So now the baseline and the sideline are like two defenders, and then you're trapped by two others. You're in a box. <laughs> And that's very hard to get out of. St. Joe down to t three timeouts. Would you have used a timeout there? I, I, it was, what option did you have? You You're know, okay you wanted, with it? I think you wanted to help help get your team something good going down into halftime. Get enough. any kind of momentum you can get. You don't want to go in da into halftime down by this many points and on a turnover. We'll have 4.9 to work with. Back to Cloud trying to create off the dribble. Time running out. First half over. And what a great run for the Flyers toward the end of the first half. Outscoring St. Joe 12 to 4. And Cornelia Sigmundova, what a half she had. It was some great 
pull up jump shots, good decisions on offense, and then to add, end the half with such a momentous block. She's been a real boost off the bench. Roz will send you to the studio for the Sports Center U halftime report. In a game today where Dayton can clinch the A-10 regular season championship. Again, our score at the break, Dayton 36 and St. Joseph's 27. You're watching college basketball on ESPNU as St. Joe takes on Dayton. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in our action. You are watching college basketball on ESPNU at St. Joseph's takes on Dayton. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in our action after these messages. It is halftime here in Dayton as St. Joe takes on Dayton. ESPN College Basketball is available live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at watchespn.com and with the Watch ESPN app. We'll be back with the second half after this. You're watching college basketball on ESPNU as St. Joe takes on Dayton. We're currently experiencing technical difficulties, and we'll get you back to the action as soon as possible.
The Dayton Flyers end the first half on a 24-8 run and lead at halftime 36-27. I'm Jim Barber. This is Roz Golan Wude, who played her college basketball at the great Stanford University. One of the keys in this game was for St. Joe to get to the free throw line because that's where they excel, but the Hawks have only two attempts and two makes. So how does that change in the second half? Well, they've got to be more aggressive, and you really have to look to Nat Natasha Cloud to attack the basket more. With her size, she can create for herself or for others. She's a very good passing guard, but you know, she just hasn't been able to really penetrate the three-point line. Credit great defense by Dayton, keeping everyone in front and taking away their strengths. At the beginning, you mentioned what's at stake for these teams, so let's take a look at the potential for the NCAA tournament beginning with St. Joe. Hey, it's great that Charlie Cream has them in his creamatology. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, Coach Griffin wasn't sure if this is a two-bid league, but she says, we. I certainly believe we are. This is a very competitive conference. And you know, with the shifting of teams and different leagues, you think about the American, you think about the Big East, she says there are new powers to be seen. There are new teams stepping up and respect has to be given. And for the Dayton Flyers, Charlie projecting that they are a eight or nine seed as well, heading out west to Seattle. Well, Coach Daber says some of the early losses that his team had, you know, they, they lost three of their five losses are on buzzer beaters, overtime. You know, if he could have that Iowa overtime, overtime loss back, he said he'd love it because his team's come a long way with their defense, with their maturity, a lot of young players getting big minutes. He says we're much better now, much more mature. It's tough. Sometimes those losses in November matter a lot, particularly for schools trying to stay up to speed with the high majors. We're coming back with the second half, and we'll see if Aaron Shields can get more actively involved for the Hawks, who are down by nine.
Welcome back to Dayton Arena. A couple of unlikely heroes in the first half for St. Joseph's. Kelsey Berger stepping up inside and out. Spotted up, benefited from her teammates, passing the ball right here, and finishing traffic in the paint with the post, but has guard-like dribbling skills. Pulls up before getting the charge, doesn't get in too deep. And now on the other end, it's Jody Corneli Sigmundova, the 6'5 post, showing some mid-range game, not getting any charges. Teams are trapping, hedging on the pick on the pick and roll, so she slips it, hits her jump shot. Offensively, making great decisions. She's 6'5", high release. It's hard to stop, block, or even contest that shot. Well, the stars of this game have struggled. Andrea Hoover, just one of eight from the floor. She does have eight points, and Aaron Shields, one of four, and just two points for St. Joe. Now the outlet pass to Cloud. And back to Shields for three. On the break, open court, Celeste Edwards for three. Dayton improves its largest lead now to 12. Celeste Edwards, Coach Jaber shakes his head smiling. She's the type of kid, he said, short-term memory. She'll miss five in a row, say, hey, give me a shot for number six. Sounds like a guard, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a sign of a, of a good player, of one that might get yelled at a lot. Sure. But great players take risks. First half numbers, St. Joe to the free throw line again just twice, while Dayton perfect at 12 for 12. And really, that's been the difference in this game to this point. Well, Dayton has been able to penetrate the three-point line. They've been able to get feet in the paint. First half, St. Jones has been very perimeter. Fairbanks misses inside, and here comes Celeste Edwards. Amber Dean with an opening and an offensive foul. Amber Dean just not her day today, out of control. The defense is anticipating her. If she beats the first line of defense, St. Joe's is doing a good job of having the second line of defense, their post players, ready and waiting for that charge. Well, you mentioned that. Ten turnovers for Dayton and Dean. That's four of them. Two of them are off of charges. St. Joe trying to spoil the celebration afterwards and keep the A-10 regular championship alive. Fairbanks pivoting one way and then back the other. Well done. Fairbanks knew she was going to get some opportunity this season. She worked very hard in the offseason, went to Pete Mills' big man's camp, and improved her game. She came off the bench in the win against Dayton, played 27 minutes, had 7 of 11 from the floor, 14 points, 7 rebounds. You know, to really talk about the drastic jump in, in what's happening for Fairbanks, last season she averaged under two points per game, two rebounds. Now she's averaging 13.6 rebounds, 27 minutes a game. It's a complete role change for this player. And what does Jim Jaber say about the head coach of St. Joe? That's what Cindy Griffin does the best. She develops players like that, and they can make a big difference from one year to the next. Now remember, St. Joseph's graduated four seniors, three of the major cont contributors, their point guard, their number one scorer, rebounder, and a defensive stopper, and yet they're still competitive. So much that they have a 21 season going at 20 and six. Edwards bumped outside by Cloud. Schaefer says about his guard, Edwards, she has that hyper speed. Edwards has already been a two-time Atlantic 10 Rookie of the Week, and that's something that uh, Dayton has good success with. Rookies going off. Amber Dean last time, last year, four-time Rookie of the Week. Well, and Edwards almost on cue there. On cue, Celeste Edwards, two-time Rookie of the Week. Look, you've got more. Andrea Hoover, four-time Rookie of the Week, two year, two seasons ago. Rookies do well with Coach Daver. Yeah, both of these teams have got a lot of underclassmen that are playing significant roles, so going to be good for a long time, it appears. Dayton with a 16-point lead, and Edwards back to work again. Edwards has had her handprint on the success of Dayton all game, defensively deeing up some of the best players, offensively pushing the pace, and finding her own shot. There was a point. Roswell St. Joe led 19 to 12, and since then, a 33 to 10 edge. And what's been the biggest difference in your opinion? Uh, ability to run in the fast break. Dayton really has been able to do that more towards the end of the first half and here in the second. Sant misses another chance for St. Joe to get a little closer. 
also for St. Joseph's, Aaron Shields and Natasha Cloud really struggling in the game. And it's tough when one player is struggling, but two. You're asking a lot of young players to step up. Cloud answers with a three, a much needed three after having only just two points prior to that. And St. Joe pulls within 10. Well, the good thing about Cloud, you know, last game against Duquesne, she hits the game-winning layup, but she had struggled all game three for eight before that, only seven points in the game. Amber Dean. Amber Dean starting to get things going for herself, but Cloud found other ways to affect it. She had seven rebounds, nine assists. You know, her presence on the court is worth something at all times. And Amber Dean's game is getting better and better. She was the last person cut from the national team during the summer, and in fact, that kind of motivated her. She came back to work even harder. And she said she was shocked that she was picked for the U19 uh, USA team tryout. And you know, you should expect it if you're the freshman of the year of your conference, but sure. you know, she said what really helped her was the intensity of Coach Gaber's practices and going up against Andrea Hoover every day in practice. The Rosses looks like Dayton's back to work on the inside again. This time a lot scoring and they're trading baskets right now, which favors the Flyers. Before Kelly Austria went down with an ACL, Dayton had five players, all five starters, averaging double digits. Real impressive number for a team that averages over 80 points a game. Give and go, Shields for three, trying to get into the game, but she misses wide left. Here come the Flyers and what they do best. Timeout, St. Joe. Amber Dean struggling early, but if you want to find some easy baskets, it's in transition. Find the defense standing up, explode past the going left. She finishes taking up big. We are back to business here on ESPNU. And this is what makes Dayton go, the fast break. It starts with the defensive board. you got a rebound to run. This also makes them go. Anyone can bring it up the court. Any of the guards are capable of pushing the pace. And lastly, outlet passes, long ones, fast ones. You've already covered the distance of the court before the defense gets the set up. And Roz, an 11 nothing edge in fast break points for Dayton today. And that, along with the free throws, the most significant numbers as Dayton has built a 14-point early second half lead. And also 10 points off of turnovers. St. Joseph's eight in the first half. They've done a better job of taking care of the ball in the second half. But they got to continue to be aggressive. Clouds starting to warm up. You know, in the half court set, they're starting to set a lot more flare screens so that Erin Shields can maybe get her feet set and get that three-point shot. Shields and Cloud have combined three for 13 from the floor. They have scored seven points. Keep in mind, they average a combined almost 30. Here's Dean on the run out. To the goal. Amber Dean. 
Amber Dean struggling in the half court set, out of control, getting charges. But when she runs in the fast break, the defense is not set up, and that's where she's finding success. Is Dainey getting, Dainey getting to the point where they may run St. Joe out of the building here? Well, it's possible. But Dayton's got to, St. Joseph's got to get back to good transition defense. And right now, the big girls beat you down the court. Yeah. Allen a lot. And the Flyers kind of recognize they're in for the kill right now. Up by 18. The tough thing about running teams like Dayton, their posts run. You know, guards can run, but your post players aren't used to, usually used to that pace. So your posts have to run with Ali Malat, Cornelius Mugova. Quite a difference in the first meeting between these two teams in which St. Joe won 75-63. That's Amber Dean, who did not play in that first game, and that certainly was a huge loss for Dayton due to concussion. Sigmundova from the elbow. Coach Jaber's project is showing a lot of potential right now. Fairbanks call for traveling. Her length, 6'5", you can't block or contest her shot well. And then on the other end, her length at 6'5", causes the travel. Dayton 54, St. Joe 36. A few programs looking to build their resumes during Bracket Build Builder Week on ESPNU next Sunday. They include Virginia and Florida State playing at 12.30 Eastern time. And then at 2.30, number four, South Carolina takes on number 10, Tennessee. Both games also live on Watch ESPN. And a couple of weeks ago, you were witness to a pretty good upset, Washington beating Stanford. Absolutely. Washington really worked hard in the 2-3 zone where they cracked down on Chanae Agumake and made Stanford settle for 41 three-point attempts. And wow. they only made nine. 41 attempts. You know, and, and the thing is with uh, Washington, when you get, if you allow Stanford to take threes, the type of rebounds that you get with threes are long ones that their much smaller guards can go after as opposed to rebounds in the paint where Stanford's big players are going to grab them and eat them up. So it really worked in their favor, strategically executed from start to finish. Well put, in our game here in the Atlantic 10, Dayton has really taken charge in the second half. Opening it up an 18 point lead, and they've been charging to the basket and on the attack mode for most of the second half. Speaking wow. of the attack, back the other way, Sierra Andrews who gets clobbered going to the free throw line. This will only, so far, St. Joseph's has only taken two free throws in the game. Yeah. So you talk about needing to get to the free throw, free throw line for some easy baskets. You know, Andrews has the right idea. But overall, St. Joseph's in this game has been out aggressive. Duh. <laughs> you know. It's a new word. It's a new word. Dayton is shooting 52% versus 36 for St. Joseph's. They've got four players in double digits versus just one for St. Joseph's. You know, Dayton's been to the free throw line 12 times versus now three for St. Joseph's. 
you know, even rebounding wise, Dayton's being more aggressive on the glass. 31 to St. Joseph's 15. Yep. Number is pretty telling in this game. Andrews completes her second free throw. But St. Joe down in a big hole, 16 points, under 13 left. Back on the 26th, Dayton was 9 of 27 in the second half. Today, 80%, 8 for 10. Andrews doing a good job of pushing the pace, putting some pressure on the defense. Well, you mentioned long rebounds off of missed threes. That was one of them there, and Andrews goes the length of the floor and will come up with an and one. Coach Griffin really likes when Andrews is aggressive. She says she's best when she's playing confident, attacking the rim. You know, she often benefits from the best defenders being on their star players' cloud and shields. And right now, no hesitation in going coast to coast. She's bringing a nice spark to the team as far as aggressive play. Andrews has 14 points. You know, we talked about the discrepancy in rebounding, 31-15 coming out of the timeout. Coach Griffin said for St. Joseph's, for us to go where we really want to go and make a real run at this thing for the tournament and to go far in it, we need another rebounder. And they need a way to find this game to stop Dayton off the dribble. Aberdeen moments ago doing her best Celeste Edwards imi imitation. Guards just look quicker today. Who's going to answer for St. Joe with a shot clock under 10? Now down to five. Kelsey Berger has played a really solid game off the bench, now has 11 and is the team's top scorer. Berger has made good defense decisions, and she's attacked the pressure defense of Dayton. They're climbing on her, so she went all the way to the rim. Hawks have knocked off five points from that 18-point deficit. Sigmundova keeps that alive somehow. Malat. Jaber loves seeing Malat being aggressive. She says she's the type of kid that doesn't like to be the star, doesn't like attention. He says it's probably one of the reasons Malat is here as opposed to like a Notre Dame or a Purdue. But now, in order for our program to go where we want to go, Malat has to be comfortable in that spotlight. And he says these days, she is. Let's take a look at the Atlantic 10 Conference standings. The top seven teams, Dayton at 12 and one, St. Joe at nine and four. A Dayton win today gives the Flyers the regular season title and the number one seed in the upcoming A-10 tournament in Richmond, Virginia. I think it's gonna be a very interesting tournament. There's a bunch of teams in the middle that are beating each other up. Nine teams that are just within a game or two of each, of each other and then four teams in a tie for first right now. So. You know, you're trying to get into that top four and get that rest, get that first round by. And these last few games down the stretch in Atlantic 10 basketball is going to be very important. Jim Jaber's team playing its fourth game in eight days. Its travel schedule has been hellacious as of late. He has 206 wins 
That's a school record. He's led UD to six straight 21 seasons. He's a two time A 10 coach of the year, and they are approaching their fifth consecutive NCAA tournament. Coach Jaber is a real offensive mind, and last season was a year of overcoming expectations. You know, they lost six, seven seniors, six youngest team in the nation last year, end up going for a school record wins, 28. They advanced to the second round of the tournament. They beat St. John's at St. John's. You know, just a, he knows how to get the best out of his players. It really doesn't matter what good coaches lose because they're not going to be down very long, if down at all. Well, in his first year at Dayton, the team only got three wins. They went three and 25. They were down then. Yes. yes. And now he's built the program up. Last season, the team was ranked as high as 11 in the nation. You talk about building from scratch. Last 2012, they won their first ever Atlantic 10 tournament. And last season, got their first ever regular season.